When we left our host, Bill Dance, last week, he was well into some great information and tips on fishing for bass with one of his favorite lures, tube jigs. But our show clock played a dirty trick on him by signaling that we were out of showtime before he'd even got started good sharing all the tips he wanted to. So today, Bill's back to show you the rest of his tips on fishing the super versatile tube jig, a fantastic lure that can be fished in so many different ways and conditions. Bass often love them shallow, sometimes deep, or even anywhere in between. Let's watch. I don't mind this big fish. I feel like I got an alligator on me. Oh yeah, look at the size of that. Oh, that's a big one. Ooh. Oh. Well, I'm telling you, that is a bite. Look at the size of that. Woo! Isn't that pretty? Mmm. Oh. Gorgeous. All right, boy. Time to go home. Mm. Let me show you the bait that we're using today. And it's a dandy. It's Bass Pro Shops Tube Crawl. It's four and a half inches long, has lifelike crawls, a ring tube body, a pulsating skirt, and is available in seven fish catching colors. Now this one has tremendous action, and we've got it rigged with 316th Bass Pro Shop XPS 4 alt tube head jig. You know, tubes have always been an alternative to a jig, but what really makes them so great is that you can fish them so many doggone ways. You can crawl them, you can hop them, you can swim them, drag them, bump them, jerk them, flip them, pitch them, drop shot them, split shot them, Carolina rig them, even Texas rig them. And brother, you know what? That's saying a whole lot about this simple looking bait we call a tube. But the way we're fishing them today, out here in open water, well, that's another way to fish them, and it's really fun and in an exciting way to fish them. No doubt about it, tubes are a great bait that you can fish so many different ways at all depths and a wide variety of conditions. But they do work best in a semi-clear to a clear environment. That one right there is full of hemp cell. Man, what are you up to? Pretty thing, you. <laughs> Fish came out of the water. Came up like a covey of birds coming up. Scared me. You like that? Have you got that? There we go. I'm telling you, you like that, didn't you? Look at that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? How about? Oh me, I did a boo boo. Did a boo boo. Y'all ever do this? This is the first time I've done that since I was eight years old. I'm serious. First time I've done this since I was eight years old. You don't do this very often with a quantum reel. If you have it all adjusted right, your ACS control set right, tension control set right, you just don't do that. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set that thing, I'm gonna show you something right here. I'm gonna set that control just right. I'm gonna set that right. I'm gonna show you something. If that thing's set right, <clears throat> what you can do with this reel, let me see if this is set just right. Watch. Now watch. You can throw it. Look. Turn loose of the reel. Look at that. Not even touch the reel. Not even a backlash in it. Pitch set right with the ACS. Adjustable cast system set up on it. 
tension control just right. You don't even have to thumb it. Everything's just set just right. It just control is right and everything. Uh oh. Is that a hit? No. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Oh golly, yeah. Woo! Look a hair. Oh my goodness. That is a mule. That is a mule. Look at that big thing. Looks like a big old hog trying to Oh, strip that drag. That is a big one. That is a big one. Pulling drag good. Oh. That is a big one. Man, pretty fish. Look at the size of that horse. Oh, and he's gorgeous. Come here, pretty thing. Oh, I'm gonna turn you loose. Boy, you liked that, didn't you? Look at the gut on that baby. Isn't that nice? Whoa! Bubby. Man, man, man. Mm, mm, mm. Bye-bye. You know, a couple of things that are key to the success of fishing a tube, and one is tuning the bait and fishing it so that it falls on a horizontal plane. To me, you know, that is really, really important. As far as tuning it, you have to tune it to swim properly, just like you would a, a jerk bait or a crank bait. If it helicopters or falls vertically, it's not gonna produce near as well. Now, with that in mind, I'm constantly eyeballing it. I want it to track and swim and fall just right. If it's not, I'm gonna constantly make the necessary adjustment. I want it to be perfectly straight. I want it to be perfect straight on that line. I know if it's tied off to one side or the other and it's not in line with the hook eye, the bait is gonna twirl and swirl and it's not gonna swim and fall through the water column. The hook also must be aligned evenly with the tube. When I'm looking at my tube, I want that line, knot, and hook eye all in line. Again, everything perfectly in line. Why do I want my bait to fall or move horizontally? Well, I firmly believe that horizontal movement is much more attractive to a bass simply because of the composition of their eyes. Basically, they can see things better that move horizontally across their visual plane. And research bears this out. Cone cells of the eye are better at detecting motion and studies show these cells are denser in the bass's eye when the visual axis of focus lies in a horizontal plane. And this cone cell density favors the detection of movement on a horizontal plane. So, side to side action are simply more visible and attractive to a bass. I believe fall rates are also really crucial when fishing a tube. I try to stay with the lightest weight possible and long casts are also critical so I use the lightest and the thinnest line I can get away with. The longer the tube is in the water and at the bass's desired depth level, the more fish I think I can catch. The real key to this particular bait is a steady horizontal movement with slight pauses and a few slight twitches as it moves along. But casting it out is just a simple technique. I often use the countdown method and rely heavily on my graph to tell me the best depth. The hits or strikes are slight taps. A six pound bass strike on a tube sometimes can feel like a half pound crappie. He got it again. What in the world is that fish doing? Woo! He's got it again, he's got it again. 
Now here's a little trick I do in extremely cold water when the bass are very inactive and I want to create an extremely slow horizontal fall. I add buoyancy to the tube or when I'm having trouble with the hook you know sliding down up here in the head of the tube. Have you ever seen 3H tubing sealer that's used to seal doors and windows in the winter? Sometimes when you really want to slow this thing down, cut off a small section of it and push it up into the body of the tube with a pencil or a wooden dowel. What that'll do, it'll create an extremely slow fall. It'll also help hold your hook or lead head in place. If it starts to slide, you can add Loctite or Crazy Glue to it. You can add as much foam as you wish. The more foam, the more flotation you'll get. Hey, the long and short of fish in a tube is this. It may not be one of the most favorite lures on your list, and it may not be fished as much these days as it once was, but I can flat tell you this. There are some days bass will hit a tube when they won't hit anything else. Oh, he was going up. Oh, strip and drag, strip and drag. Yes, sir. Wee! Hold him, hold him. Look at that fish pull my rod. That is a horse. He's back in the bushes. I'm gonna tell you what that is—a strong Jesse right there, boys. That is a strong fish. Man, you talk about a dandy. Look, the bait just fell out. Goodness gracious. Look at <laughs> that is a strong fish right there, boys. Look at that. I don't know what you've been eating, but whatever it is, I want some of it. Hey. Boy, I'm telling you, boy, you are something. Look at you. You bad thing, you. Woo! I tell you what, like I said earlier, you can fish this simple looking bait so many different ways. Whether you're swimming it, hopping it, Texas rigging it, split shotting it, Carolina rigging it, drop shotting it, flipping it, pitching it, crawling it, dragging it, or any of the other methods, it gives you so much versatility. Some days you can fish it shallow, some days you can fish it deep, and some days, like today, you can get out there and fish it in between. And that is a fun way to fish it, I'm telling you. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.